tonight. Students protest. Bangladeshi students protest discriminatory recruitment systems demanding merit-based government jobs. China cornered. NATO allies accuse China of enabling Russia's war in Ukraine, highlighting concerns over Beijing's nuclear arsenal and space capabilities. Hope of return. NASA's astronauts confident in Starliner's safe return after first crewed spaceflight, despite earlier mechanical issues. And becoming Maria. Experience the sound of music featuring one vacationer's journey into cinematic landscapes. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and welcome to World News Tonight. Today as well we delve deep into the currents of global affairs and our top story centers on ongoing protests in Bangladesh, bringing you comprehensive coverage of the latest developments from the region. Thousands of Bangladeshi students protest a recruitment system favoring war heroes, children and specific groups for top government jobs, citing discrimination. They demand merit-based hiring as a third of positions are reserved for 1971 independence war veterans offspring, plus quotas for women, minorities and the disabled. Protests erupted in Bangladesh over a court system allocating government job post with one third reserved for descendants of 1971 independent fighters, as well as women, minorities, and the disabled. Critics argue the system favors pro government groups linked to Prime Minister Sheikh Kajina, daughter of the country's founding leader Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who recently won her fourth consecutive election. Demonstrations dubbed the Bangal blockade saw students block roads and railways in Dhaka and other cities, demanding quota system abolition or reform. Despite a temporary suspension by the top court, protests continue until a permanent resolution is reached. Economic challenges persist amid Bangladesh's rapid growth trajectory and recent global disruptions. Now taking a look at the critical summit taking place, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden hosted a social dinner in the East Room for NATO allies and partners at the White House, as the UK's new PM joined them as well. This comes as NATO leaders came up with a joint statement vowing lasting support for Ukraine. On Wednesday in Washington, the 32 nation leaders of NATO issued a joint declaration announcing a membership pledge for Ukraine, which also strongly condemned China's support for Russia. The declaration announced a long-term commitment to security assistance for Ukraine. A new NATO center will be established to take over most of the coordination for a more reliable flow of military equipment and training that Ukraine needs. The alliance also pledged to provide Ukraine with a minimum funding of 43.28 billion U.S. dollars in military aid within the next year. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg said that during the meeting, leaders decided to take further steps to bring Ukraine even closer to NATO. The alliance also pledged to continue support on an irreversible path to full Euro-Atlantic integration, including NATO membership. But Stoltenberg also highlighted that NATO will only be in a position to extend a membership invitation to Ukraine when the war with Russia is over, when the allies agree and conditions are met. And the most serious rebuke against Beijing, NATO allies called China a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine and expressed concerns over Beijing's nuclear arsenal and its capabilities in space. For more on this story, we have other than world news special correspondent Minoli Zagaria from Kursk in Russia. What do you have for us, Minoli? Yes, Sanuradi. The sternly worded final communique approved by the 32 NATO members at their summit in Washington makes clear that China is becoming a focus of the military alliance. The European and North American members and their partners in the Indo-Pacific increasingly see shared security concerns coming from Russia and its Asian supporters, especially China. Beijing insists that it does not provide direct military aid to Russia but has maintained strong trade ties with its northern neighbor throughout the conflict. In the communique, NATO member countries say China has become a war enabler through its no limits partnership with Russia and its large scale support for Russia's defense industrial base. Beijing has expressed displeasure at NATO's growing interest in Asia and has demanded the alliance stay out of the Asia-Pacific region and not inside confrontation. 
back to you, Anuradhi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Menoli Zagaria from Kursk in Russia. Heading over to East Asia, Taiwan's Coast Guard released videos showing Chinese ships entering prohibited waters near Kinmen Islands. Taiwan responded by dispatching four Coast Guard vessels to monitor the intruders closely. Taiwan expressed concern over increased Chinese military activity near its borders, particularly noting the presence of Chinese warplanes joining the recent Shandong aircraft carrier in the Pacific. This coincided with the NATO summit discussing China's role in supporting Russia's actions in Ukraine and its broader security challenges to Europe. Taiwan's defense ministry reported detecting 66 Chinese military aircrafts with significant numbers passing close to the island's south and southeast. Taiwanese President Lai ching -te emphasized Taiwan's commitment to strengthening its defenses against what he describes as escalating threats from Beijing, including grey zone tactics in the Taiwan Strait and surrounding areas. Taking a closer look at France now, there are just over two weeks to go until the Olympic Games kick off in Paris. Securing the Games is a top priority for France. Ahead of the opening ceremony, thousands of troops have arrived in the French capital. After missions in Mali and Afghanistan, these French soldiers have been deployed to Paris. With 15 million visitors expected over the course of the Olympics, securing the event is a top priority. A temporary military base has been set up less than 30 minutes away from all Olympic sites, and the Mammoth facility can house over 4,500 soldiers. 15 soldiers are housed in each unit. The barracks, which were set up in under three months, also have shower facilities, a canteen and a medical center. Intents are operation centers to supervise the opening ceremony due to take place on the banks of the Seine. Soldiers currently on mission here continue to train and in this case neutralize an attacker. <laughs> In total, 15,000 soldiers will be deployed during the course of the Games. That's in addition to 30,000 police officers and gendarmes per day, with a peak of 45,000 for the opening ceremony. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Stay tuned. And on the road to the White House tonight, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a longtime Biden ally, said U.S. President Joe Biden must decide quickly whether to stay in the 2024 White House race while declining to say definitively that she wanted him to run. Democratic U.S. President Joe Biden faced fresh doubts on Wednesday about his re-election chances, including from two high-profile members of the party. Nancy Pelosi, and major donor George Clooney. The former House Speaker, who is a longtime Biden ally, told MSNBC he must decide quickly whether to stay in the 2024 race, while declining to say definitively that she wanted him to run. Hollywood star Clooney, who co-hosted a fundraiser for Biden last month, withdrew his support with a damning opinion piece in the New York Times, saying that Biden was not the same man he was in 2020. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries told lawmakers Wednesday that he would relay their concerns about Biden's electability to the president, according to media reports. For nearly two weeks, the 81-year-old has sought to stem defections by congressional representatives in his party, donors, and other allies, worried he might lose the November 5th election to his 78-year-old Republican rival Donald Trump after a halting debate performance. The president has said again and again that he will be the Democratic candidate and that he believes he can beat Trump. He has said repeatedly that he had a bad night at the June 27th debate and vowed to stay in the race. So far, public defections remain a small segment of the 213 Democratic-aligned House members, and the party's leadership continues to back Biden publicly. No members of the Senate have publicly said Biden should stand aside, though Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado said on Tuesday he did not believe Biden could beat Trump.
A prosecutor accused Alec Baldwin of disregarding gun safety rules in the 2021 shooting death of Rust cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Baldwin's defense argued he was failed by the movie's safety experts, some of whom have been convicted as a trial marks a rare instance of an actor facing criminal charges for an onset fatality in Hollywood. A New Mexico prosecutor on Wednesday accused Hollywood star Alec Baldwin of ignoring safety protocols in the 2021 killing of a cinematographer during rehearsal on the set of a low-budget Western movie titled Rust. My understanding, um, you, were, you were in the room when the lady when someone I was, was the shot? holding the gun, yeah. Okay. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed by a live round fired from a gun in Baldwin's hand. The bullet also wounded director Joel Souza. State prosecutors charged Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter. Hutchins's death was Hollywood's first on-set shooting fatality in three decades. The trial is largely unprecedented in U.S. history, holding an actor criminally responsible for a gun death during filming. Baldwin, who is charged with involuntary manslaughter, has insisted the gun went off on its own and that his finger was never on the trigger. Defense attorney Alex Spiro said blame lay with the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, and first assistant director Dave Halls. Spiro said during his opening arguments that no one saw Baldwin intentionally pull the trigger and that it was the responsibility of firearms safety experts to ensure a firearm was safe for an actor to use it as a prop. The prop gun was placed in Mr. Baldwin's hands and cold gun was announced, meaning it had been checked and double checked by those responsible to ensure the gun was safe. Armorer Gutierrez, whose job on the set of Rust included managing firearms safely, was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in March for loading the live round. Prosecutors will have to persuade jurors Baldwin is guilty of willful and reckless criminal negligence. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams remain confident in Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, despite ongoing ground-based tests that have extended their stay. The astronauts use Starliner as a safe haven during a potential debris risk. Testing continues at NASA's White Sand facility. The first two astronauts to fly Boeing's Starliner capsule say they're confident it can bring them home. They've already been in space much longer than expected. Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Sunny Williams had their first news conference since docking to the International Space Station more than a month ago. The veteran NASA astronauts and former U.S. Navy test pilots are waiting for the company and the U.S. Space Agency to fix an array of thruster issues. They were launched aboard Starliner on June 5th from Florida and docked the next day at the ISS. They were supposed to spend about eight days there. Now, their mission has been extended indefinitely due to a series of issues with Starliner's propulsion system. Five of Starliner's 28 maneuvering thrusters went dead during its 24-hour trek to the station. A propellant valve failed to properly close, and there have been five leaks of helium, which is used to pressurize the thrusters. The current test mission is Boeing's final step before the spacecraft can clinch NASA's certification for routine astronaut flights. That would make it the second U.S. orbital capsule alongside SpaceX's Crew Dragon. A NASA chief has said extra testing could last at least a couple of weeks before Starliner gets the green light to bring the astronauts back to Earth. NASA and Boeing have said it is capable of getting them home in the event of an emergency on the ISS. But the capsule is not approved to fly home under normal non-emergency circumstances until its thruster issues are resolved, or at least better understood. NASA and Boeing officials have emphasized that the two astronauts are not stranded in space. We're in Australia now, where a 28-year-old man has been charged with multiple offences, including three counts of murder over a fire in Western Sydney that killed his three children aged two, six and five months. His case, heard in Parramatta local court, was adjourned until the 6th of September. Sydney police have charged a man with murder over a house fire that killed three children in a case that has sparked outrage in Australia. Police allege the 28-year-old man set fire to the home on Sunday while his partner and her seven children were inside and allegedly blocked attempts by officers to get into the house and rescue the children. Two boys aged two and six and a five-month-old girl were killed. So it's one of the uh, worst cases of filicide that we have. 
um, in New South Wales in recent memory. New South Wales Police Homicide Squad Commander Danny Doherty on Thursday said the suspect, who is being treated for fire-related injuries, will be held responsible for his actions in court. The property scoured by forensics experts after the house fire is in Laylor Park, about 20 miles west of Sydney city centre. Authorities say a 29-year-old woman, three boys and a girl were hospitalised. The woman has since been released and the children are in stable condition. And now for an update on the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. The death toll in Gaza has tragically climbed to over 38,000, while an alarming number of individuals have been wounded amidst the ongoing attacks. In a significant diplomatic effort, delegations from Israel, the United States, Egypt and Qatar convened in Qatar to discuss a potential ceasefire for Gaza. Following the Doha meeting, negotiations are scheduled to continue tomorrow in Cairo, emphasizing the ongoing effort to reach a resolution. The presence of Israel's spy chief David Bernier and the U.S. CIA director William Burns underscores the high-level diplomatic engagement in the peace process. These talks reflect a concerted international effort to broker ceasefire and alleviate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza amid escalating tensions. Heading back to East Asia, heavy rainfall in Chongqing, China caused flooding and landslides, displacing over 450 people in Kaiju. The flooding also led to evacuations in Hubei's Bangdong County, where rescuers removed partially submerged vehicles. In southwestern China's Chongqing, heavy floods submerged homes, leading to the evacuation of approximately 490 residents from 280 affected houses. Rescue operations revealed chest-deep water levels in some areas as local authorities have activated emergency response plans to manage the situation. Chinese state news agencies reported at least five deaths and one missing due to the severe rainfall as of today. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. This travel season, a popular trend is visiting filming locations of favorite movies, like experiencing a Sound of Music vacation firsthand. It offers enthusiasts a chance to immerse themselves in cinematic landscapes and iconic scenes. One such individual is Stephanie Ellswood. Here's a peek at her story. Stephanie Ellswood adores the Sound of Music. She's seen the 1965 classic hundreds of times since she was a kid. In fact, she loves the movie so much that on a recent trip to Austria with her boyfriend, she visited all the sites made famous in the movie, including the Mirabel Gardens in Salzburg. It was there that she recreated the iconic Do Re Mi scene. Look at Stephanie go! Dancing along with Julie Andrews and the Von Trapp kids almost 60 years later. And that concludes our World News Roundup for this evening. We'll return tomorrow with more vital updates from across the globe. Stay tuned as Sinamaya Dune will be right back with the nightly business report. Thank you.